Hey guys, welcome back to Mixed Media Sound, the channel created for you by you. I am your host, Ronnie McBride, and today I have some exciting news that I want to share with you, but I'm going to wait till the end of the video to share it so we can get through this demonstration first. So definitely stick around so you can hear the announcement. Um, <clears throat> so today we're going to do... Uh, we're going to focus on smoke brushes. Last week I used a smoke brush and some of you um, uh, were confused on how to make your own. Some of you uh, were asking me to give you one. I would prefer to just teach you how to fish so you guys can make an infinite amount of smoke brushes however you want in different styles and different flavors and, um, <clears throat> and not always rely on me to create it for you. Okay, so... Um, what we have here is I have some smoke. You know, you could just do a, a search on Google. You could look in stock photography, whatever you want to do um, <clears throat> for your image. And uh, so I found this one here. Okay. And so what I want to do is I kind of want to I want to get rid of the black and I want to keep as much of the uh, white information and the uh, the gradation of white information in here, the value of white information. Okay. So one of the things you need to remember. One concept you should guys should uh, hold on to is that white reveals, black conceals. Okay, and you're going to see this repetitively in different applications where it uses an image's white and black values to decide how the effect is applied. Okay, it happens with um, color modes. It happens with um, uh, garbage mats. Uh, it happens with uh, just a whole bunch of different things in, in video. You're going to see it in 3D. So <clears throat> it's a, it's a um, it's definitely a concept that you sh you should you know remember okay so so what I want to do is I want to I want all this wonderful white information I want to get rid of the black okay and um, we're gonna do so by starting with using um, let's collect this uh, we'll click on this and we'll use uh, select sample color <clears throat> okay so show you what's happening here is wherever I'm clicking on screen <clears throat> I'm telling affinity designer um, basically that this is the pixel that I want s selected okay <clears throat> and you can increase and decrease the tolerance of that amount okay so I'm gonna leave it about about 18 percent okay just I'm just doing this by eye you know if you look if we get in real close you know, you can see I, I'm getting more information or less. And I think a little bit, if it eats into the image, it'll be better. Okay. So I'm going to apply that. Okay. Then I'm going to go back up to select and hit refine. Okay. So now we have something else here. So now it's in this overlay mode. Okay. I'm going to change this mode uh, for now so you guys can see something. I'm going to put it in black and white. Okay, so right now, this is everything that's selected. It's a hard selection, but it's not giving me much of that in-between value, that gray area on this, okay? So what I want to do is um, I'll make sure my mode is on matte because that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're creating a matte that decides what's being selected, okay? And um, in this adjustment brush area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. I'm going to drag a brush all over this. And basically what I'm saying to Affinity Designer is look in these areas, try a little bit harder. There's some blacks in there. Um, do a better job. And you're going to see something different here. Okay, so now do you notice that we have more detail here? It's not so blotchy. It's not a big black thing. We're getting all those values in between. That's the kind of selection that we definitely want. If I switch this preview mode to overlay... You can see here, you know, this is all this great detail. That's the kind of detail we want that makes that's going to make a great brush. <clears throat> okay, so now that I have that uh, selected, what I will do is I'm going to hit delete. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to deselect this. Okay, so I got some bright, bright whites and I got some grays in here too. And got some of this wispiness or whatever. Okay, uh, now I'm going to go over to my erase brush. <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm going to erase some of this information here. Okay, actually, let me command Z that. I'm going to change my hardness because I don't want it to, I don't want it to be a very hard erase. I kind of want that soft edge that I'm seeing everywhere else. Okay. 
<clears throat> so let me just erase that and looks good and what I don't want you know part of the reason why I wanted to erase this is because I didn't want that that's character of that line being cut off right there showing up every time I use that brush I mean it's perfectly fine if I was using it on the tip of a cigarette or something but you saw how I was using the brush. I was kind of using it as a texture in a certain way. And also, you know, you could use it as a smoke brush. Um, if you layer them, you can use it as fire. You know, there's a lot of qualities of smoke that are kind of similar to the shapes that are made in fire. So you could use it for that too. Um, so, <clears throat> okay. So I got rid of that little, that little bit right here. One more thing that I want to do is a couple of things I want to do. I'm going to kind of center this a bit here. I'm going to also uh, change my document because it was an arbitrary sized image and I like to keep things nice and square, you know, 500 by 500 pixels, a thousand by a thousand. Anytime I'm dealing with textures or I'm dealing with brushes, you guys will know that I'm, I'm usually use um, those sizes. Okay. I don't really go smaller I usually, or I'll definitely go bigger, but um, okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to go here, and I still got this blue tinge in here, this little tent. I want to get rid of that. And the way I can get rid of that is make it black and white. Okay, so you can make some adjustments if you want further. I think it's perfectly fine at the default. There isn't anything else I really want to do. The uh, other thing I may do is I might um, put a, a curves adjustment on it just to kind of bring out the tones a little bit better. You know, so I can kind of deepen it a bit. Increase the whites or darken the darks just a little bit. Okay, but I still want to kind of keep it. Keep it kind of soft. Okay. So that's pretty much our brush right there. That is the basis of our brush. And what I'll do is now I'll export that brush. And I'll export it as a PNG because I want to keep the transparency. If I make it a JPEG, it'll flatten it and it'll make the background white and then it'll have my image here in the middle. I don't want that. I want the transparency. I want that part to be visible because I want that to be invisible when I'm applying the, the brush. Otherwise, it'd be a big square with a texture in the middle of it. It'd look really weird. So PNG is the way we're going. And I'm going to call this Smoke Texture 5. Okay. Okay. So now I have that saved. Now, I have this other file I've been working on, and I've been using my smoke brushes or whatever to uh, to create this. This is all done in Affinity. This is not done in anything else. And um, uh, if I go into my Pixel Persona, and um, I go to the there's a couple of options here okay so in the pixel persona to make these smoke brushes you have to be in the pixel persona because this is a pixel based image we are working with we're making a pixel based um you know uh, it, uh what do you call it brush so <clears throat> there's a couple of options here uh you want to create a new category you can create a new category and it basically gives you a new category within your drop down so you definitely want to try to kind of organize your your brushes that way you also get to rename your category. So if I click on this smoke brush two and call it, you know, smoke brush three, I could change the name of that. Um, <clears throat> and then um, down here, sorry, down here, if I go to, I could delete a category. Okay, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Then there's import category and export category. Um, if I export a category to somebody else, then they would use the import command to import those brushes into their uh, their copy a copy of Affinity Designer. Um, moving down, there's a, a couple of different brushes that you can make. There's a new image brush. An image brush basically takes color color value too as well. So if I wanted to make um, you know fish scales or something, and I use an image, um, it'll take the color value of the fish scales as well as you know, all the pixel information that makes up that image. Uh, a square or a rounded brush, those are actually um, brushes that you build right inside Affinity Designer, and then you just change the attributes of them to work the way that you want, but they're not based on anything besides a square and a circle, so you don't have to import anything. Then there's another thing called the new intensity brush. That's what we're going to be making. And the intensity brush, what makes an intensity brush so special is the fact that you can change the color 
um, of it. So if I go into my color well, right, and I change that here or here, okay, and if you guys don't have this color well, um, you want to go into view and go down to customize tools and then hit number of columns two, okay, and then close that. And then once you do that, you'll get that color well in your, uh, in your screen. So there's a little power tip for you. Um, but going back here, if I use, um, I can use any color that I want with an intensity brush, okay? So let's go back and let's do new intensity brush. We're going to grab our uh, smoke brush five that we just made, right? And here's our smoke brush, okay? So if I click on it and I grab one of my, my brush tool here, right? And I click on smoke, smoke brush, you can see there's my smoke brush, right? And... I can paint with it just like so. Okay, so I use that purple that was in there. I can drop that in there, right? Um, actually, let me just delete that because what I'm going to do is um, oh, oh, okay. I thought I thought that was an existing pixel brush, a uh, pixel layer. Um, but it looks like it wasn't. So I can go in here and then I can go ahead and just click. I can click and drag as well too to add that in there, you know, so I have something there. I can then go back and use my um, erase, erase tool, right? Click on this brush. Um, as you can see, when you double click on a brush, it brings up the brush editor. So there's attributes that you can change. You can change the hardness of it, the spacing in between as well, um, the shape, the rotation. If I need to rotate it a certain way, um, I could do that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's where you would do it. So you just double click on it and then you get the editor. Okay, you can change the dynamics of it based on uh, pen pressure or the tilt or the angle, depending on what type of pen that you have. Most most likely, if you're using something other than a Wacom, it's just going to be pressure. Um, so, uh, you know, I may also take my eras erase brush and use that same uh, brush, right, and increase the side, the size of it, and I could actually get rid of information as well too. So if you see, I'm painting across this thing here. And then that keeps it looking, you know, organic. So you can change the shape. I can combine different brushes, of course. So I can go back to um, Ronnie's uh, smoke and add that. And then, you know, once I do that, you know, you got to play with, you know, some different things with it, you know, um, I play with the blend modes. You know, you know, maybe this is uh, not so much Batman. This is maybe Batgirl because we got the, the pink in here, you know. Um, I'm going to go back to my pen tool here. I think I want another bit of fire or fiery smoke right there. OK, so that's it, guys. So that is um, creating a brush. All right. And you learned how to import it. And if you want to. Um, Export your brushes to share with somebody else. You would just go down to, let's go back to Smoke Brush 3. Uh, and I'm going to share this. I'll put this brush on the Affinity Designer uh, resource area. But um, if you want to share it with someone, you just hit Export Category. And um, I'm going to make a new folder here. I'm going to call it Export Brushes. OK, and I'm going to just save it in there. OK, and so just so you guys can see, I'm going to delete this brush as if it never existed and I could import um, import category. And there's my smoke brush three demo AF brushes. And there it is. OK, so um, that's it, guys. If you have any questions, you can email me at Mixed Media Salad. Uh, on Twitter, or um, you could message me on the boards, and um, hopefully that answers your questions, and you guys are going to be making some brushes and making some cool things. So um, don't go anywhere, because I have a special announcement that I want to share with you guys, and so just uh, sit tight. Here it comes. If you ever wanted to learn how to take your sketches from a rough idea to a final piece of vector artwork, then this is the class for you. My name is Ronnie McBride, and I'm a visual designer in the New York metropolitan area. 
In this class, I will walk you through my process for creating professional vector artwork in Affinity Designer. We will begin by introducing you to the interface. I want you to get comfortable with moving between the tools, the palettes, and the properties. I'm also going to cover tips and techniques and shortcuts for creating complex shapes. I will also cover topics that will show you how to use gradients to define light and shadows. And I'm going to demonstrate the importance of line quality and how by varying the line quality, you can add character to your work. These are just a few topics I'll be covering in this beginner's course, but you can be sure that I will be covering so much more. Now, if you don't have any drawings or sketches of your own, that's okay because I'll be supplying you with all the course files, copies of my original sketches, as well as a few additional goodies, like brushes, textures, and color palettes. I'm really excited about teaching this class, and I'm looking forward to seeing how you've applied the things that you've learned here in your own work. So what are you waiting for? Let's get started. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please hit the subscribe button.